All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's take a look at problem 8-2-A. This problem has us preparing a production budget. And the thing I worry about when I do these, because I do a bunch of small budgets, I don't want you to lose sight of the big picture. All of these budgets kind of work together. They call it a master budget, this comprehensive master budget you'll see written in a lot of accounting textbooks. And the idea here is, okay, if I know how many units I'm gonna sell, I can say a lot about cash collections as we did in a previous problem. Well, also, if I know I gotta make a thousand cookies, say that's my units, I gotta make a thousand cookies, uh, or I'm gonna sell a thousand cookies, I gotta make a thousand cookies. In fact, I probably have to make more than that in case I run out of stock or to be ready for the next quarter or the next month, I wanna have some inventories left over. So that's what this video is all about is, uh, okay, I know how many I'm gonna sell, how many do I wanna make if I'm planning to sell that many? Well, future budgets, this fits right in the middle of our budgets, future budgets will say, okay, I'm gonna make uh, 1100 cookies uh, this, this month. How many eggs do I need to buy? How much sugar do I need to buy? How many employees do I need to have to help make that many cookies? Or what are my other costs? The operating costs of running a kitchen that's that busy. We can use this number that we're gonna produce in this video. We can use these production numbers to drive so many other budgets. So it's a very useful thing. And the thing we could get is tunnel vision, right? We could say, okay, I'm just doing a production budget now. So I just wanted to say that at the outset to give you an idea that this fits into a greater context of budgeting. Here we go. Danny Company shows the following estimates for unit sales for the first quarter of its upcoming fiscal year. Units sold 3,000, 3,500, and that's for January, February, March for the quarter 11,000. The company requires finished goods inventory on hand equal to 20% of the next month's expected sales. So that's just what we were saying before, where if we're planning to sell you know, 3,000 units in the corner. Not only do we have to make those 3,000 units, we also want to have some left over. So we want to make a few extra to be ready for the next quarter or in case we have higher than expected demand. The company expects to begin January with 600 units in inventory. So we start with some units already in inventory and the expected sales for April are 5,000. Okay, so some extra information there. Let's begin the problem with a three line title. The name of our company is Danny Company. We are preparing a production budget. And this is for the quarter ended and uh, January, February, March, March 31st. Okay, we've got ourselves a beautiful title. Now, the starting point for a production budget is the, your sales. You know, if you're going to sell 3,000 units, you better make 3,000 units. So that's going to be our starting point. Again, we've got Jan, Feb, March, and quarter, right? For the quarter is our kind of our totals column here, if you will. So our January sales are going to be 3,000 and that's our expected sales in units, not in dollars here. And it was 3,000 units. Okay, so if I sell 3,000 units, I better make 3,000 units, but I also wanna have some left over. It says we wanna end with 20% of next month's expected sales ready to go. So again, the company requires finished goods inventory uh, on the hand of equal to 20% of the next month's sales. Okay, so we're in January here. We wanna end with 20% of February's stuff ready to go. 20% times 3,500 is 700. Again, 0.2 times 00 is 700. So that is our desired ending inventory. We're gonna add that. So 
So in this case, our desired ending inventory, we want to be left with 700. So again, I want to sell 3,000 units. I've got to make 3,000 units. I also want to have 700 left over. So I need 3,700 units. That's my total production needs. Now, good news, I actually don't have to make all 3,700. Why is that? Well, because I had some when I started. I had 600 units to begin with, so I deduct that out. I don't need to produce those 600 units because I already have them. So I'm going to deduct my beginning inventory, and in this case, that was 600. 3,700 minus 600 is 3,100. That is my required production. And since we're doing a production budget, that's the number we're looking for. No dollar signs here. These are all in units. Let's do February. February, our expected sales was 3,500. Our desired ending inventory for February is going to be 20% of the next month. So 20% of March. That's 900. 4,500 times 0.2 is 900. Okay, so again, I'm expecting I'm going to sell 3,500 units. It means I got to make 3,500 units, plus I want to have 900 left over. It means in total, I need to come across 4,400 units in the month of February. But I start with some inventory. What's my uh, beginning inventory for February? It's the same as my ending inventory for January, right? The end of January. Midnight on January 31st is the same thing as 12.01 a.m. on February 1st. So uh, 700 units is what I expect to have on hand at the start of February. It means I don't have to make those 700 units. So that's 3,700 units to be produced. For March, March, it's 4,500 units. My desired ending inventory for March, oh no, I don't see anything about that, but... I was wondering why they had this sentence at the bottom. The expected unit sales for April are 5,000. Okay, well, then at the end of March, I want to have 20% of April. 20% of 5,000 is 1,000. 4,500 plus 1,000 is 5,500. Our beginning inventory was 900. I don't need to make those. 5,500 minus 900 is 4,600 units. So we've done a wonderful job so far. Our total expected sales for the quarter, 3,000 plus 3,500 plus 4,500, it's 11,000. Here's where things get tricky, and students mess this up all the time. They take the ending inventory and they total this. They go 7 plus 9 plus 1,000, that's 2,600. No, no, no. Our desired ending inventory for the quarter, we got to say, well, what's the date of the end of the quarter? And the answer is it's March 31st. How much inventory am I hoping to have on hand on March 31st? It is not 2,600. Definitely not. The ending inventory for the quarter should be the same as the end of March because the end of March is March 31st. Well, the end of the quarter is also March 31st. So this is a commonly screwed up thing on tests. 11,000 plus 1,000 is 12,000. What's our beginning inventory? Again, we do not total this. And it's not the beginning of March, it's the beginning of the quarter. What was the first day of the quarter? The first day of the quarter was January 1st. So I go back to January, I see it's 600. I take away 600 here. That's my beginning inventory. 12,000 minus 600 is 11,400. And there we have it. We have prepared ourselves a very nice looking production budget. I hope this video helps. And if it helps, I hope you'll help me too. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.